Hello and welcome to your lecture that's going to go back over some things that should feel like a review to you, which are going to be the concepts of projections, coordinate systems, and also geographic transformations. And we're going to talk about these things all within the context of the ArcGIS software. So the little link here at the bottom is a fun link to a YouTube video from the TV series The West Wing. Hopefully you've watched it before you uh, came here to watch the lecture. So usually in an in-person class, we sit and we watch this video together, um, get a little chuckle out of it and uh, use it as a context for kind of why these things matter. A lot of times when we get into our data, we see only the data and the beautiful nature of our data, but it's always important to understand that some of the background pieces of information and even the view of our data um, inherently has some biases that we just need to always be aware of. So moving forward here, why projections? This little graphic is actually from a former student who went on to grad school and was sitting through a lecture and sent me this picture um, uh, while he was in class, which don't do that. You should always just focus on class, but um, it's a good reminder of the things that we are paying attention to when we think about projections. We are thinking about the shape of the features we're looking at. We're looking at the area. Is it an equal area across a large area or are we focused only on a smaller area? Um, is the projection we've chosen the correct for the, the geographic area that we have? If we have a large area and we're wanting to make sure that our summaries of area are equivalent across this large area, then we want to pay attention and make sure we have an equal area projection. Same things with distance and direction. There are projections that are built to better adhere to true distances and true directions. So it all kind of leads up to this idea of map purpose, which we'll talk a little bit more in cartography, but you also want to be thinking about it just when it comes to the projection of your data. You can put any data in virtually any projection, but that doesn't mean that it's going to make the data the most useful. So these are the things we want to think about. Um, what I want to do now is put this within context of the software. So you have a lot of resources on the Canvas site, and you also are going to have some required reading at the end of this lecture uh, slides for you to read on your own that talk about the basics of projections, why we have them, the different types, how they're built, what their parameters are, um, what systems, whether they're conic, whether they're cylindrical, all of those different types of things. But what I want us to have here is a common understanding of terminology that we're going to be using throughout the semester when we talk about coordinate systems, projections, and spatial reference throughout this class, specifically with the ArcGIS software and specifically primarily this semester with Arc Pro. So when you're in Arc Pro um, and when you're in Esri's software, you're going to find often that the term coordinate system is interchangeable with the term projected coordinate system and is interchangeable with the term spatial reference. And even in my colloquialisms, when I speak, you'll find that there's another one in there, which is just this overarching term called projections. So we are not going to get into the nitty gritty of the definitional textbook definition difference between a coordinate system and a projection system. We're going to kind of boil this down, um, talk about them all kind of equivalent, and then I'm going to show you at the after a few slides here how I would like for you to think about these and the questions that I will ask if I ever ask about a coordinate system. I will be very specific about what portion of the information I want. So if we look here, we can see that we can look at map properties. So all of our maps in Arc Pro and Arc Map are all built on top of a um, a defined coordinate system that all of your data projects on the fly to. So in Pro, um, you don't really get to choose this. Um, it, it automatically is, is decided by the base map that pulls in, which is usually a web mercator projection. Um, you're going to learn throughout this class that it's probably best to change your map projection, that the thing that's set behind in the maps um, map properties where things are projecting on the fly to a projected coordinate system that exists for your data. That's just a good data practice and a good analysis tool practice to have all of your data in the same coordinate system as well as the map properties in that same coordinate system. What that just does is it ensures that the software isn't having to do any project on the fly in the background while the tools run because sometimes I can throw an error. So here you can see we got into map properties and clicked on coordinate systems and you can see here what it's reporting. NAT 83, State Plain Ohio South, and then the FIPS code. So all of our coordinate systems now have what we call um, 
not in, in our state plan, we'll have a FIPS code. Um, what you want to pay attention to in this here is the fact that it's that's combining in this long name. And this name is actually just a text string of a data file name that holds all the parameters for this particular um, coordinate system. That is a combination of the datum and also the projection. So if you read this, NAD83 should pop out at you and be like, yeah, I understand that as a datum. And State Plain Ohio South is a coordinate system or a projection. So the information that you're given from Esri is all of that in one long text string, but you as the smart GIS professional know that you need to be able to parse that out and understand what part is the datum and what part is the projection. If we look over to the right hand side here, this is where we're looking at a specific layer. So we've gotten into the layer properties, we've clicked on source, and we've opened up the spatial reference. And we can see in here that it's giving us a lot of information. It's giving you a lot of the parameters that the coordinate system is built off of. But what you want to pay attention to here is the projected coordinate system. It's going to tell you the name. Um, you, from that, you'll be able to discern the linear units, and they will always uh, report out to you in the coordinate system information as well. Um, and then you're going to come down here and you want to look at the datum. And you're going to see that this datum is actually WGS 1984. What I want you to notice up here is this geographic coordinate system right here. This is actually um, being very textbook defini definition wise, um, kind of particular in saying that this is the core, the, the datum that this coordinate system is, is using. So don't let this fool you into thinking that your data is in geographic. It is not. If your data is listed up here as having a projection, it has a, a projection and it's not in geographic. If geographic, if GCS lists up here, that means that your data is in geographic and you'll also see that there are your linear units would be in decimal degrees. But here we can see that we have a data set that's in world azimuthal equidistant WGS84 for the data. All right, so for this class, um, I'm going to try to use the term spatial reference. I will, uh, spoiler alert, I often say projection just because I have for years, but I try to stick to spatial reference. When I say spatial reference, I'm going to include both the projection slash coordinate system and the datum. So all of that stuff together. So if we look over here, if I were to ask you what is the spatial reference of a data set, you would tell me both the projection and the datum. So UTM, NAD83, Ohio State Plain, not plant, Ohio State Plain South, NAD 83 Harn, or Albers Equal Area Conic with the datum of NAD 27. More often than not, I'm going to ask you to split these out because I really need you to understand that one part of the name is the projection and one part of the name is the datum. So if I am going to often ask you what's the projection of a data set, and here where you just tell me the projection, whether it's UTM, State Plain, um, any of the other varieties, Albers, um, Lambert, whatever you find. And then when I ask the datum, that's where I want you to tell me the datum. NAD 83, NAD 27, WGS 84. And in the next couple of years, you guys are going to be in the learning process and in the early professional phase where a, um, a new set of datums are actually coming out. It's been delayed as everything has because of COVID, but um, you'll get to see kind of what the world of GIS feels like when there's a new datum on the horizon that we start to move all of our data to. All right, so the one thing I want you to understand about projections in ArcGIS here is that with both ArcMap and ArcPro, um, we have this concept of on-the-fly projection. So you need to understand, like I mentioned before, that when you open up Pro or ArcMap, um, the first, in Pro, actually, your, your map has a defined coordinate system based upon the base map that by default comes in. In ArcMap, it's driven by whatever data set you add first. You always have control over that. You can always get into the map properties and toggle it to be the coordinate system of one of your data sets. And I recommend doing that. Um, you really just want to make sure that you're always viewing and analyzing your data um, in a proper coordinate system and with all things computer and all things ArcGIS. Please do not assume that the computer is making the correct choice for you. The software is gets smarter and smarter, but there's nobody smarter than you. Right? There's no computer smarter than you. You know what you need to be doing, so you need to go in and double check, um, even when you think the program might be making the right choice. So here is some examples of what data might look like for a same geographic area, but within different projections. So we have two data sets here. One is an out, uh, two views, I should say, of data. Um, and uh, we have two data sets. One is a soils data set. That's the one that you see drawn on top and drawn behind it. And that you can kind of see coming up into the, into the Great Lakes there is a county's data set. 
One of these data sets is in Albers. One of these data sets is in UTM. So if you're going to make a map, it's important to choose a projection that visually makes sense for the area that you're looking at. Um, when it comes to data analysis, it's important to choose the projection and move all of your data into that projection that meets your analysis criteria. And this is where you think about, am I, do I want somebody to be able to properly measure distance or area or direction, or is it just for visual appeal? All of those things come into play when it comes to determining what coordinate system we want to be using for our data. So why do we care? because the projections that you choose are gonna affect those size, shape, distance, direction, um, and the fact that your GIS software, ArcGIS and every other software out there, um, can analyze in only one projection. So if you throw into a tool three data sets, all in three different coordinate systems, the tool will let you do that. But what you need to understand is that in the background, all of those data sets are being migrated to a single coordinate system that the software chose for you. And it's usually typically the first data set you add into the tool. You don't want all that happening in the background. You don't want the computer in control of some of those options in the projection tool. So step one for most analysis based exercises is gonna be check out the coordinate systems of your data. If they're different, choose one that's best and move all of your data into that common coordinate system. When you're in that situation, you want to use the project tool, and that's going to be found under data management tools and toolbox, or you can just search in Arc Pro. But that's the tool where you take a data set that where the software knows what coordinate system it's in, and you just want to move it to another. All right, so the geographic transformation. This happens anytime you move from one coordinate system to another and the datum changes. So you should notice by now that you can have the same projection, but it has different datums, you know, so that you can be in the same projection, but just have different datums that that projection is laid on top of for the spheroid. So when that happens, if you're moving from one datum to another, this thing called a geographic transformation needs to happen in the background. And it's just about moving your coordinates to match up with the grid system of the new datum that you're using. From in the Esri software, you no longer have to choose the geographic coordinate system, um, excuse me, the geographic transformation necessary moving between your coordinate systems. However, you need to know that it's happening. Anytime you change datums, a geographic transformation has to happen. So um, there is a, a, an under module one, I've put an old PDF for you in there that lists out all of the common geographic transformations based upon the datums that you're moving between. And understand that these datum names, and you'll see these same type of names pop up um, in the software when it automatically chooses it for you, um, can move in both directions. So if you have data that's being moved from NAD 27 to NAD 83, um, in the lower 48 in the US, this would be the transformation that would be used. Similarly, if you were moving from NAD 83 to NAD 87, this is the same geographic transformation. They go both ways. Um, so the software is really nice for Esri right now. You don't have to go to this list, figure out which one's best. It makes that choice for you, but you need to understand that every time you project, if you're changing datums, a geographic transformation has to happen in the background. Last part of this is we're gonna talk about what to do with data when you have a missing spatial reference. So you'll know this if when you add data to your map, you come up with this message. It says unknown coordinate system or unknown spatial reference. This is actually a relatively new message in ArcPro. It has existed in the ArcGIS suite and ArcMap forever, um, but it just recently has a pop-up message now in ArcPro, which is really good because what it's gonna do is your data isn't gonna draw. It's gonna add, um, you're gonna be able to see the table, but it's gonna feel like the data just simply isn't there, or it's gonna draw in the really wrong place on the face of the earth. So this happens more often than not because you have a shapefile that's missing that .prj file. So remember our shapefiles are a distributed file system where the files that you must have in order for it to work properly are a .shp, a .dbf, and a .prj. And that .prj file is simply a text file that lists out all of the projection parameters that the software can use to place your data in the right coordinate space. If that file is missing, it doesn't mean that your data is corrupt or that it wasn't built with a, a proper projection um, or a proper coordinate system. It simply means that the computer doesn't know what it is, so it doesn't know how to place your data. So it doesn't mean that you have no spatial coordinates. It just means that the computer doesn't know how to interpret the values. Um, a lot of times this will happen if somebody's moving around data and they forget the .prj file, 
Or years ago, there were third-party applications that had the ability to generate shapefiles. But the thing that Esri held on to as their own proprietary piece of code was the piece of code that would create that .prj file. So for a while there, we had lots of shape files that were being served on the internet, but they didn't have a .prj file because those third parties could not generate that. So it was Esri's way of making sure that you eventually pulled your data into an Esri software package to generate the .prj file because there's a tool in the toolbox that can do that for you. But before we talk about the tool, we're going to talk about how do you actually, as the human, determine what the data set spatial reference really is. Um, so there's no magic tool that does this. This is you putting on your detective hat. So the first thing to do is if your data came with metadata, read the metadata. All good metadata has a section that talks about the spatial reference. And if that's there, you're just going to take that piece of information and use that with the tool. Um, if it, the metadata isn't there or doesn't say, look to see any other documentation that came with the data. Sometimes there'll be a readme file or another text file, or sometimes the website that you download it will have text on the website that tells you what the coordinate system of the data is. Um, if that, that doesn't exist, contact the person or the agency that gave you the data or the person who's responsible for the web page where you downloaded the data. And if all else fails and none of that is working, if the place where you're downloading data has other data that they're serving and you download it and it works properly and it has its PRJ file and it's drawing properly in a GIS software system, you can then sometimes make the assumption that the same data from the same data source would have also the same spatial reference. So in our exercise, we'll go through this and you'll go through these different uh, questions and ask yourself, but looking at other data from the same organization sometimes helps. Um, and then also you can, if, uh, if none of those are available to you, you can just start to dig around in the map properties. And those map properties start changing the coordinate system that your map is drawing in to any of the ones that make sense for the area that your data is supposed to be drawn in. And as soon as you land on, a coordinate system where your data draws properly in the right place, you can make an assumption that your data is probably in that projection and use that tool. The name of the tool is the defined projection tool. Use that defined projection tool to define it to be the projection that you, using your detec detective hat, have figured out that it should be. All right, so what you're going to do now is that there are some additional slides here that I talked about before that talk through different pieces of information when it comes to projections. These are going to look very familiar from any textbook that you've already read and some of the resources I've given you. But these, this, the information in here is information that will potentially be assessed on an exam. So you want to make sure you get in here and review that. Then you're going to want to go back to the module and work through the rest of the information there.